Welcome to the May the 3rd, 2012 edition of Research Business Daily Report, sponsored by SSI. Hi, I'm Bob Letterer, editor and publisher at RFL Communications. Jan Fulgoni has been a major go-to guy for state-of-the-art insights for me, as well as a major disruptor of the industry status quo during the 18 years that I've been in this industry. He's the executive chairman and co-founder of Comscore, and earlier in the 1980s and 1990s, served as president, CEO, and chairman of Information Resources, Inc. during its heyday. Jan's career is synonymous with innovation, and he's got a particular interest in measuring consumer behavior, as well as the effectiveness of advertising and research. Comscore, which he founded in 1999, delivers one-of-a-kind online and related offline insights. And we spoke with Jan this week about the impact of never-ending change in technologies and capabilities on research tools, techniques, and capabilities. Jan, thanks for getting together with us today. Uh, I, I'm real curious because you're you are one of the companies that really um, got started with social media early and with the internet, obviously early. You must have a very interesting R and D situation, given how fast everything is changing and how careful you probably have to be about where you put your monies and and your your development. Yeah, well, we're in a target rich environment uh, with. Uh all of the technological changes that are occurring and is changing at a, at a rapid pace, a dizzying pace. And I do think one has to avoid kind of chasing the next bright, shiny object. And maybe what helps us uh, in making our uh, investment decisions is that we have the data to better understand what is likely to be a lasting change versus a fad. And so we're able to, I think, to get some insights early on and then keep track of how many people are adopting certain, certain activities and the engagement with those activities and then, you know, place our investment dollars, if you will, behind the ones that we think are going are gonna to be longer lasting. Not that every one that, you know, every one of these decisions that we've made has worked out, but certainly I think the, uh, you know, the vast majority have, which, uh, which has worked well for us. You guys are experts in e-commerce. How fast is that uh, growing? Yeah. Well, right now it's almost at 20 percent um, versus year ago. So uh, it does appear to be accelerating. It's up from levels of about, uh, if you looked at the same point in time a year ago, the growth rates would probably have been running about 11 or 12 percent. So it's accelerated and um, it's growing at about uh, four times the rate of uh, spending at retail in total and about one in every ten discretionary dollars are now spent on the internet so it's a it's a pretty sizable business and in total it's it's about two hundred fifty billion dollars so uh, it's it's a force to be reckoned with at this point okay. I know you have some interesting data about cookie deletion give us that real quickly yeah so cookies um, you know cookies are put onto computers it's a small piece of code that's put on the browser that helps um, identify whether that um, machine has been seen before or whether it's visited a website or not, and et cetera. But the cookies are also used by the ad servers to um, make decisions about whether or not a machine that the ad server sees should get an impression and how many, which theoretically it sounds like a great idea. Uh, the problem is that you know, <laughs> with a lot of these technological issues, people or human beings tend to mess things up. And since you can delete cookies, that can really cause a problem. The rates right now, we've measured this around the world. Uh, and pretty much um, around the world, about 30% of Internet users will delete their cookies in a month. doesn't matter whether it's a cookie put on by the website itself or a third-party cookie, as it's called, which is put on by the ad server. Now, that's an issue, but the bigger issue on top of that is that these cookies are getting deleted anywhere between three to six times a month. And it's causing some major problems for the ad servers because the ad server sees a computer, uh, puts a cookie on it, delivers an ad, and then let's say that that uh, cookie is deleted a couple of days later. And then a day later, the ad server sees that machine again. It thinks it's a new machine. It's seen again. It puts another impression on, et cetera, et cetera. And that goes on and on and on. And you end up with um, a delivery of the media plan that's nowhere near what was intended. And that can cause then, obviously, a much lower ROI. 
than was uh, than was possible. Jen, how big are your panels now? We have two million people in the panel, a million in the U.S., and then a million scattered uh, across about 170 different countries. Uh -huh. So you maintain them pretty strongly. Um, yeah, we have a uh, you know that it's been at that size in total for some time, and you know we have a recruiting engine that runs continuously that you know repeat replaces people as they drop out. There's also a problem with ad delivery as far as being seen, isn't there? With ads? Yeah. Um, yeah, there is, and we've just uh, we've just uh, published the results of a major study in the U.S., a major study in Europe, and uh, these results are being presented in Canada today, and they involve somewhere around two dozen advertisers, billions of impressions delivered, and we were measuring whether or not the ad was visible to the um, you know, to the end user. doesn't mean that the end user was paying attention to it. We, we want to know, did it have the opportunity to be seen? And we found that um, basically about 30% of these ads are never viewable and never visible to the end user. It could be that they are loaded onto the browser by the ad server, but they're below the fold and the user never scrolls down to see them, or they could be uh, loaded and then the user uh, moves off of that page before the ad is fully rendered. So it's, it's a big issue, um, and I, I think it's analogous, if, if I can draw a parallel, it's, it's analogous to the difference between the show ratings on television and the ad break ratings. And the ad break ratings are a lot lower, and uh, you know, the advertisers buy against the commercial ratings, not against the show ratings. Okay. For, re for, reason, for reasons of time, I don't want to get into how to do it, but are there solutions to that? Uh, there... Um, it's not clear that there's a uh, complete solution. Um, you know, you, you, you probably would minimize the problem if you were just delivering the ads on the home page. You'd increase the likelihood they were seeing it. It's certainly true that the larger sites are getting higher visibility rates than the smaller uh, websites. But I don't think you're ever going to eliminate it. I think, though, that the, the solution is that the, the, the advertisers should be charged for the ones that, you know, are viewed, right, that are, that are seen. And so you might evolve, the industry might evolve into a make-good situation, just as we have in television where the publisher will provide additional ad impressions to make up uh, for what the, uh, the advertiser bought. Okay. Last question. Comscore was the company that first came up with the information about the very small proportion of online research people who were taking a very, very large percentage of research surveys. Um, I'm sure you've got a handle on who the heavy users are online these days. Who are these people? What's their uh, demographic? Well, um, we did find, as, as you know, that, that the, the, there was this concentration of heavy internet uh, uh, survey takers. Uh, but you know, heavy light users, I think that's a common phenomenon. It's, I think it's called the Lorenz curve, and we've, you see it across pretty much every human uh, activity. Um, you just got to be careful that, that if you're going to draw conclusions from that segment of heavy users of a certain um, activity, that if you can draw conclusions to the population at large, you better be sure that those heavy users are representative of the population at large. Otherwise, you can really run into some big problems. Now, we found that with these heavy survey takers, for the most part, they their attitudes, while the demographics might be different, their attitudes were often representative of the broader population, but not in every case. And you have to make sure that you've got the weighting systems to adjust for that. At the ARF, with the Foundations of Quality 2.0 that I'm involved with, um, we are looking at coming up with ways to weight the data using variables other than demographics to adjust it. And these heavy users, are these people who, that they want, that want to be influential? Uh, that's a real good question. So um, Ernest Dichter, about 50 years ago, did a, a, a kind of a seminal study where he looked at the reasons why people were influencers. And there was a whole uh, range of kind of human reasons. Some people like to hear themselves talk. Other people like to influence other people. Other people were opinionated. Some people were altruistic and wanted to help other people and offer advice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, last year, David Akers from Berkeley did a very, very interesting analysis of Dicta's paper, and he basically concluded that all of those reasons that were true 50 years ago were true today. What had changed is the scale and the speed at which opinions and influence 
can be disseminated. And with the internet, it can happen in the blink of an eye. But the human reasons for why people want to be influencers are really, I think, no different than, than they were a long time ago. Interesting. Jen, thank you. Continued success to you and ComScore. Thanks very much, Bob. Appreciate uh, the interview. When I asked Jan if he foresees any deceleration of technological breakthroughs on the foreseeable horizon, he swayed his head from side to side, which means Jan's going to stay an extremely busy guy. If you'd like to contact him, his email address is gfulgoni at comscore.com. That's Research Business Daily Report from May the 3rd, 2012, sponsored by SSI. I'm Bob Letterer, hoping you have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.